Hello and welcome back to the Dream Barn series. This is episode three. So welcome to the roof of the barn. I don't know how I'm gonna split these videos up, so I'm just gonna start talking about what I'm doing next. So we are at sort of a stopping point. The builders that did all the framing and the sheathing have left. And the next step, the next major goal of this build is to get a roof on this building before it snows. This stuff is waterproof and it could probably survive the winter just fine, but there's no reason to, to leave it out in the sun in the winter over you know a New England winter. So I'm gonna get metal on this roof before it snows. That is the plan. The builders, the, the framers that were here and did all the framing on this did a pretty good job. They, they got it in and out of here in about 10 days, which is amazing. It probably would have taken me 10 months to do this, you know. So I'm glad that we just paid for the, the builders to build the building. Now I'm gonna finish the building. So as I probably mentioned before, out here in the country, things take time. Building a building like this is a lot of steps and there's a, there's a lot of waiting in between those steps because if you're not waiting for the contractor, you're waiting for materials, and if you're not waiting for materials, you're waiting for an inspection or something. And you just have to wait and wait and wait. So right now we are in between the framing part of the building and the roofing part of the building. And in between there, we did the conduit for water, electrical, and gas to come to the building from the house. In episode two, we left off with me digging a trench in the backyard with this little loader backhoe, and it turned out to be kind of a pain in the butt. Well, that took most of the day. It was good up to there, and then this was okay, but then connecting the trench was just stupid, because you can't dig the trench over the trench. You have to do it from the side and man, that was frustrating. So the whole point of this trench is for water line, electrical line, and propane. The electrical is the priority. The water line is just to put outdoor faucets. And then a propane line for future, I'm not sure, but someday we might have a heater in here. But while we have a hole open, we wanna get the pipes in the trench. And by the way, this is the pipe we're gonna use. So that's what 300 feet of pipe looks like. It took several hours of hand digging to prepare this trench and get it cleaned up for all the pipes we were gonna need. Then, after I was done, we could start the dance of contractors, inspectors, contractors, inspectors. It was, it was a long process. First, we had the electrician and the plumber come by, and after they were done, then the gas company came. And when they were done, there was just one more inspection. Okay, just got the final okay on the gas line with the tracer wire, back filling with sand, this only took uh, two and a half weeks. It's 95 feet long, and I got it about four feet deep. We put the water line in, then we had to put sand, and then we put the electrical conduit in, and then more sand. Then the gas company came, and they put their gas line in. Then we had to put more sand in, and then we can start backfilling over the sand on top of the gas line. So the final step, I have to put this caution tape in so that if anyone in the future starts to dig, they're gonna hit the tape and know that there's pipes below the tape. And here's the utility situation that is propane. That's going to be for ethernet. So I can have a router out here and have Wi-Fi, security camera, stuff like that. This line is going to be a conduit for an electrical wire going back to the house so that I can have a switch from the house running lights in the barn. And then the big two inch pipe here is the main conduit for the main 
uh, line that's going to be going up into a panel on the inside of the building, 100 amp feed. This is the water line that's going to be connected to the house water, and then this is going to tee off of it and go that way so I can have a water faucet on that corner of the building, a water faucet here on this corner of the building, and then I'm going to trench again, but a shallow trench just around the building and have water on the back as well. So time to backfill a hole. So that phase is now complete. Nothing has actually run to the building, but the conduit is in place. Things have been permitted, inspected, the hole is backfilled. So now we are moving on to the roofing and the trim work on the roof. Now I wanted to wait until the framing and the sheathing of this building was complete so that I could take exact measurements of all of the metal parts and pieces that we would need to order for the building. I didn't want to order my metal and then have it here and then have to frame everything to fit the metal. It's, it's better to just do it and then measure after. You do have to wait in between, but you get exact cuts. The metal comes ready to go and you can just put it on. So right now I have measured the roof and then I went and ordered the metal. Before we put the metal on, I need to finish a little bit of fascia work and then I'm gonna wrap all of my fascia with aluminum because I don't want to have to paint anything on this building. So everything on this building is either going to be steel or aluminum or some kind of product that doesn't need to be painted. So as you can see, we went with the zip system on the roof. I really am a big fan of the zip system. We used it on the house and it's really easy to go on. It's waterproof. It's just a, it's a good product and it does cost a little more than plywood, but you don't have to deal with anything else. It's, you put it on, put the metal right on top, you're good. I've seen people framing barns and, and putting metal roofs on, pole barns and stuff with no plywood on the roof, just purlins and then metal. And I, I just don't understand that. I, I really like having the strength of plywood on the roof so that you know, you know, the roof is solid and then that metal is just a skin to protect it. But I like the, I like the strength. I like to be able to walk around up here and not have to think about it. I'm sure the, the metal on the purlins works great wherever they're putting it on, but not in New England. I was really excited to get the scaffolding up because I'm about to do a ton of roof and siding work and I hate working on ladders. And then the roof arrived and I'm always amazed at how little material there seems to be when it gets off the truck because that has to cover 3,000 square feet of roof and it's like two inches thick. Okay, it is a beautiful day today. 62 degrees and sunny September afternoon. And I got all of this trim redone here. When the framers left, they, they, they did leave a little bit of a mess, but the fascia board now is a nice clean line all the way up and down. That's gonna be wrapped with aluminum and as well as this side over here, this fascia is going to be wrapped with aluminum. But underneath the overhang, I'm putting soffit. This is the soffit. That's going to be flat like this, running down underneath the, the overhang coming out from the fascia. The fascia is going to be like this. So I need to go up there and get a line that is parallel and level with the bottom of the fascia. So there's my line. Now I'm just gonna do a test. Oh look, a metal break. This is what I'm gonna make today. I'm gonna make a bunch of this stuff. This is called an F and J channel. And this is gonna go up underneath where my soffit goes. So the plan is to bend about 120 feet of this stuff. Put this in line with the red line all the way around. My soffit is going to slide into the F channel and get nailed here up top. 
and then my siding is gonna slide up in here, and this will be black, this will be black, and then the siding will be here. So that, I have to make a whole bunch of this stuff. And then my fascia trim is gonna come down, wrap around, and go up here, and it will cover all this. It'll cover this edge. So this is what I'm building today. Okay, so yesterday, sorry, two days ago, I spent the day in here bending metal. Got the black coil, got the trim caddy here, which is nice Craigslist find, 75 bucks for that. That's like a $400 little machine. And then this, uh, I spent about four or five hours on this and I learned a lot and I got pretty good at repeating bends. So it turns out that buying a metal break is a fraction of the cost of hiring a crew to come in and do your metal work. It also turns out that this is the most fun and satisfying tool I've ever used. And I just made 20 of these trim pieces. And these are custom size for exactly what I need. This is an FJ trim, so it kind of looks like an F, and then it also looks like a J. I made 20 pieces of that out of two rolls of coil, and this is what I did with it. So this is the soffit. So this was yesterday's job, and I did this among many rainstorms. And it's frustrating doing this in the rain because when it starts to rain, the water just drips right into your face because you're up underneath, working underneath the overhang. But today is a beautiful day. And today we are moving on to section two right here. So I'm a quarter of the way done with the building, but I learned a lot yesterday and this should go a lot faster. Pretty good. Again, there's gonna be an, another piece of trim going around here to cover that whole thing up. So you will see all this. And then my siding is gonna go up in here in this J channel. So that goes up there. So it'll be a nice clean border. And uh, yeah, that looks pretty hot. I like it. It is a gorgeous day today, and uh, yesterday I was up on the top of the scaffolding. I got the peak finished, and now I'm working on this final soffit down here. My battery ran out, but I really like how the upper peak came out yesterday. All right, we're not even all the way up yet but I've got to put some blocking in here so I can put the next sheet on. There's gonna be another sheet of paneling going up here. So we got a lot of, a lot of wasps and hornets in my face. So I'm gonna put a block right here so I can get the next one up. And then the next piece is a big sort of, it gets wider. So I gotta measure for that and cut it. If you're ever standing on top of a 20-foot scaffolding and getting frustrated doing math, trying to get a piece of wood to fit into a weird shape, and you can scribe the wood, you should just scribe it and then cut it. See what I mean? No math? and a perfect fit. Nice. So I just got two coats of exterior paint on it. 
and it, it, you know, I should never have to come up here to paint. This is T111 plywood. It's already water resistant. And then the two coats of paint on it, it's not gonna see any sun or water. So it should be good. More precarious balancing and scribing. And no math. all set. Uh, today the plan is to get this finished and I have to do this little bit of soffit underneath the overhang here and then all of the soffit will be done. Then I can start putting fascia on. Okay one more piece. This is starting to look like a real building. And check out this corner. I mean, seriously. One more front corner to go, and then I can start fascia. Just gotta finish that one. Okay, so this process is not as fast as I hope it would be, but I finally got the corners figured out. And I like how it's it's going. So this long run here should take less than an hour. It's just it's going to be six pieces of trim, and they're just straight lines. The corners take an hour. By the time you get, the, they're angled and it's all kinds of caulking and it's it's just very complicated. But I like how they're coming out. So this side's almost done. Yeah, I'm happy with this, very happy. Today I got one more piece to put on the other side and then we are at the peaks. So today is the high day all the way up. There it is. I know this is only a relatively low resolution action cam shot, but I'm pretty proud with how this came out. And yeah, that's caulk smeared all over the siding, but I cleaned it up. Got all the front done. That peak looks really good. And there's actually gonna be one more piece. The rake trim is gonna go over that. So about a third or so, maybe almost half of that fascia will be covered by another piece of trim. So there'll be that oil can kind of bowing of the metal will be shaded. So it won't be so prominent but you'll still see a nice clean line up there. So, side looks good. I have one more piece of metal to put on the back. We 
ready for roofing. And there it is, folks, another Dream Barn episode on the YouTube. So stick around because coming up in the next episode, I am going to be installing a metal roof all by myself. And I've actually never done this before, so this should be fun and exciting and who knows what's going to happen. Thank you guys so much for watching these videos. It's really so much fun making them and knowing that you're watching them. Ugh, sorry about that. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram over Instagram Vino Farm and see photos like this of uh, things that I shot last summer but never posted because this whole thing was a big secret. Thanks for watching.